Hello everyone and welcome to Scholarship. The chapter that we will be doing today is the Laburnum Talk by Ted Hughes. Before I start, I want you to have your book Hornbill just before you so that as I speak, you can make your notes side by side. Let's get started. And this sort of a positivity 
see that is uh, going on in the atmosphere, the laburnum starts to live again, we can say. It starts shedding its worries and becomes a part of this eternal enjoyment. No matter how pessimistic the weather is, no matter how pessimistic the season of autumn is, no matter how pessimistic our life is, it is up to us to have this positive mindset, to have a positive outlook in life and make life meaningful and worth living. So this is the dominant theme in this poem. Second is the smaller theme, we can say the sub-theme, is the mutual relationship between the goldfinch and the tree. Now we know the tree is the home to this goldfinch's nest to her babies and the tree is providing it with protection, with shelter, with shade. And in turn, the goldfinch is providing the tree with so much of happiness, positivity, light. It is breaking the silence that is surrounding this tree. It is bringing happiness and liveliness to this tree. And that is the mutual relationship. They are both dependent on each other. Nobody is independent of each other here. And it is a shared relationship. So this is the and these are the two themes of this chapter. Now we will discuss this poem in three stages. As I had said that first the tree is all calm and peaceful. The goldfinch comes, brings a lot of liveliness and cheerfulness to it. And after the goldfinch flies back into this infinite sky, the tree becomes quiet, succumbs to slumber again. So let's discuss this poem now, stanza by stanza. So we will now be discussing stanza 1 and stanza 2 of this poem. The laburnum top is silent, quite still. In the afternoon yellow September sunlight, a few leaves yellowing and all its seeds fallen. Now, as I have told you that the setting of this entire uh, poem is in the autumn season and um, the poet is actually presenting the laburnum tree here, the laburnum top here and the effects of autumn that have occurred on it. Now we know that whenever we are talking about autumn we often associate the color yellow with it because obviously there are green leaves that start yellowing, um, all of the things start deteriorating, there is decay and deterioration that is happening. Even in the tree the leaves have started to yellow, they have started to decay in that sense and the poisonous seeds of this laburnum top have also started to fall. And you can see how um, this word like, um, you know, September, yellow, afternoon, they're all talking about autumn here. The idea that September, this month of September, is obviously when we have autumn. The fact that afternoon sun, uh, the afternoon sunlight, this golden effect of this sunlight, the golden sunlight which is falling over this laburnum tree is also adding to the yellow atmosphere. Now, uh, again, we've talked about the silent, quiet, and still how there is um, complete stagnation, there is no spontaneity, there is no breeze that is uh, here. Um, the laburnum top is extremely silent, quiet, and calm here. The poetic device here, coming to the first stanza, is alliteration. Now, what is alliteration? Alliteration is the repetition of a consonant uh, of a consonant into adjacent words. The fact that there is S and S here. We have two words. We have September sunlight. We have S here and we have S here. So there is repetition of the S in two adjacent words and that is the alliteration here. So I'll write A here for alliteration. Coming to the uh, next stanza. Now in the first stanza it appears that there is slumber, there is stagnation and it appears that this tree has become really sad and there is nothing that can redeem it from its slumber and uh, that. Until and unless, nothing can redeem the tree until and unless we see that this goldfinch that is the symbol of vibrancy, is the symbol of happiness, euphoria, sudden cheerfulness, liveliness that comes with a twitching chirp. Twitching chirp is basically, um, twitching is basically small jerky movements and chirp is basically short uh, high pitched sounds. So it's starting to make these small movements, it's, it's making these high pitched, short high pitched sounds and that is how this bird enters the tree. Now it's brought a lot of energy with it. Suddenly we know that this tree is like really silent but this bird comes and it brings a lot of liveliness, energy, twitching chirp, she comes with twitching chirp to this tree. A suddenness. Now that we, this tree was all silent, suddenly she's come onto this branch and 
a startlement at the branch end. There is startlement and suddenness at the branch end. Then as sleek as a lizard and alert and abrupt. Now she has come to this tree and she is as sleek as a lizard. She enters the thickness and the machine starts up. Now she's as sleek as a lizard. Why is she referred to here or, compare, or uh, compared with a lizard? Is because just like a lizard, you know, when they're on walls, they start to have these smooth, steady movements, slow and steady movements. She is also making slow and steady movements like the lizard. She is also alert and abrupt. Now she is entering into the thickness of this tree because she wants to go to her nest. Her nest is inside this laburnum tree where her kids are waiting for her. She has brought food for them and she doesn't want her enemies to be aware of the fact where the nest is. She wants the nest to be undiscovered. So she is making small abrupt movements, she is alert that nobody is following her, there is no enemy around and she is making these kind of movements to go towards the branch, uh, to, to go towards the nest. She enters the thickness and a machine starts up. Now a machine starts up. Of jitterings and a tremor of wings and trillings, the whole tree trembles and thrills. Now this obviously, you know, this, this was all silent and the nest which is inside the children of the goldfinch which are inside were all really silent in that sense and suddenly this goldfinch has come the mother bird has come with food so obviously the children will get so excited they've seen their mother after so long she's brought food for them they're all hungry and they start making a lot of noise they're so happy so a machine starts up now how why is there a comparison with a machine so when you start a machine it starts to make a lot of noise and it starts to create a chaos if there's energy that's taking place here so similarly even in the tree a sort of a machine starts a noise starts up of chitterings of uh, a tremor of wings and trillings all of these are sounds which the baby birds are creating because they're so happy to see their mother the whole tree trembles and thrills it appears like this tree has started trembling and it is also thrilled that so much of energy is there we know that the tree was silent but now there is such a celebratory mood there is so much of vibrance of life it appears that it is trembling it is the engine of her family who is this it here the it here is the goldfinch the goldfinch is the engine of her family now see the energy is the source of energy for a machine so similarly the goldfinch is the source of energy and liveliness of her family. She is the engine of her family. She is the source of energy for her family. Just like uh, the fact that you can't operate a machine without the engine. You have to have the engine to operate a machine. You also have to have the bird for the survival of the family. Without the goldfinch, the survival of the family is not possible. She stokes it full, then flirts out to a branch end. She stokes it full. Now, what does this mean? So, basically, when you stoke something, uh, what does it mean? So, it means to add fuel or to add coal to a boiler or to a steam engine, to add energy to something, to add fuel or coal or whatever energy to something and give it that source of energy. So, she stokes it full. She gives energy to her young ones. She has brought food for them. She has given them energy. She, she stokes it full. She feeds them to their full. She makes sure that she feeds them till their hunger is satisfied. So that is what this means. Then she flirts out to a branch end. Now after the bird has fed its family and all of those um, little ones are happy, she goes back to this branch end and then from their branch end uh, she flies off. Showing her barred face identity mask. Now, barred face identity mask um, means that, see, here, this is uh, the poetic device that is being used here is the transferred epithet. Uh, so, transferred epithet is basically when you have an adjective to a noun, but the meaning is for something else. The, what, whatever the adjective has been used for a particular noun, the meaning is something else. So, uh, here, what is happening is that the 
leaves or the flowers are of this laburnum tree the hanging leaves or the hanging flowers of this laburnum tree are falling on the face of this um, uh, gold finch and are creating a sort of a barred face identity mask they are falling like bars on the uh, uh, gold finch face and it's creating like a face uh, a, a mask on her face the sunlight that is falling you can see like there are bars on her face and that is what this means now coming to the other uh, poetic devices simile so simile is this comparison that is being made here as sleek as a lizard whenever you see words like as or like then you can point out that there's a simile as sleek as a lizard because this bird is as sleek as slow as steady and as smooth as a lizard uh, that is why we call it simile you can see as has been used here so you can see it's a simile next is metaphor so metaphor here first is a machine starts up a machine starts up because uh, we can say machine uh, first of all a metaphor is a direct comparison like in simile you have words like as or like or something like that in metaphor you don't have these uh, words it's a direct comparison you directly call out uh, something as something like a machine starts up the family of the goldfinch here the little ones the little babies they have been referred to as a machine that starts up because these they start to make a lot of noise of chitterings and of trillings and similar just like a machine starts to make noise when it's operated these small and little ones also start to make a lot of noise and that is why that is the metaphor a direct comparison the second metaphor here so i'll write m here because there is a metaphor this is s for simile the second metaphor here is the it is the engine of a family now see there is a direct comparison directly the goldfinch has been called as the engine of her family it's not as or like as in the case of a simile it's directly that she is the engine of her family here is the metaphor she is being referred to the engine of her family just like the en engine is the source of energy for a machine she is the source of energy for her family next we have onomatopoeia onomatopoeia is basically sounds just like we have uh, chitterings and trillings here the poet has used these sounds um these uh, basic these sounds of birds etc and all of those things uh, of these natin of these natural elements so that is onomatopoeia which right here so this is the explanation of stanza 1 and 2 of the poem and the poetic device is used let's move to the next stanza now coming to the third and fourth stanza of this poem now after the goldfinch has fed its children to their full she has uh, stocked it full as in she has uh, satisfied their hunger and filled their stomachs to the full um, after that the goldfinch comes to the branch end of the laburnum top where she sits and there she makes eerily delicate whistle chirrup whisperings she makes these whispers she makes these low gentle sounds and these are sounds of her motherly satisfaction that she has fed her children she has taken care of them she has given them attention and after she has like um probably like tucked them in or probably like served them after that she has this motherly satisfaction and these sounds that she makes are the symbol of her satisfaction that okay her children have been taken care of after that she launches away towards the infinite and she launches away into the infinite as in the sky she launches into the sky she she goes um out into the sky and she leaves the tree and she leaves her children and she flies away and the laburnum subsides to empty the laburnum tree now that this goldfinch who was the symbol of liveliness of positivity and brought this celebratory mood to this entire uh, tree and this entire atmosphere this laburnum tree has now again succumbed to slumber has succumbed to this quietness and calmness as it was as i had said that there were three stages the fact that there is uh, a loss of uh, a lack of spontaneity of life calmness and emptiness and hollowness that exists with the tree firstly the goldfinch comes and brings the spirals of life into the tree and third when she leaves uh, then the laburnum again succumbs to you know um, this silence hollowness and emptiness it it succumbs to empty as in it succumbs to hollowness emptiness 
emptiness in that sense that is what happens and um, this is the end of the poem it comes back to this state of quietness this probably hopelessness but again the message of this poem is the fact that you it is your life um, if, if we draw a parallel with the laburnum it is our life it can be dull and lack spontaneity but it is up to us to have a positive attitude be like the goldfinch uh, in our lives bring a lot of liveliness to our life and that comes with the optimistic attitude erasing all the pessimism uh, no matter how pessimistic the atmosphere is no matter if it's the autumnal season of our life we have to bring happiness to it. So this was the entire explanation of the poem. If you like this video then you can like, share and subscribe to our channel Scholarship. You can also follow us on the Instagram handle Scholarship and for more updates on the upcoming videos on the upcoming channel.